Hi everyone, uh, my name is Ron Steele with Live the Enlightened Lifestyle and today is May 27th, 2017. I got that right this week. Uh, I'm sorry about our last video. I don't know why I said 2013, probably because it was May 13th, I believe, the last time we did this. So uh, sorry about that, but I tried to fix it a little bit in the video and down in the description last week. So if you see a 2013 video, that was really two weeks ago um, in 2017. So anyway, Today is May 27, 2017. I'm Ron Steele with Lived in Light and Lifestyle, and uh, my guest today is going to be Jody Troop. Uh, this is UN Swissendo Part 3. Um, this will be uh, the third of, of the three video webinar series uh, for a while. We'll probably have vid, um, Jody and maybe Susan come back in a, a couple of months to give us an update on what's going on with the UN Swissendo. Uh, Susan should be joining us soon. She's running a little late today. Um, but please go to uh, Live the Enlightened Lifestyle on YouTube and look for uh, my videos there. You can see a lot more videos, plus today's video will be posted there later tonight and also on uh, Facebook, Live the Enlightened Lifestyle Facebook group, Live the Enlightened Lifestyle uh, Facebook page, um, and then we have a worldwide free webinar um, uh, page. It's an event, Facebook event page. So you can find us all over uh, Facebook and YouTube. Um, also, you can go to, Jody, what is it? UNSwissendo dot the website? Yeah, dot net. Um, it's www.swissendo.news. Oh, yeah, as and soon as I asked you, I remembered. <laughs> so it's unswissendo.news? Actually, just, just no, now I'm blanking, swissendo.news. Okay. There's no, the, UN, the UN is part of it, but it's not part of the URL. All right. So, um, so you guys, please uh, join us today in, in welcoming uh, Jody Troop. She's going to give us some really good information today in part three of the UN Swissendo and um, talk a little bit about the Venus Project. So go ahead, Jody. I'll turn it over to you. Yes. Thank you, Ron. Hello, everyone. Everybody. Is that I'll mute. I'm going to go ahead and mute. Go ahead, Jody. Okay. Um, welcome to everybody again. Um, we're starting a little bit differently this week. The previous two shows that we've done um, were, of course, highlighting Swissindo, what it's here to do, the mission. Um, and we have something a little bit different today because one of the projects that Swissindo um, is funding is called the Venus Project. And um, so I wanted to focus on that. I'll, I'll start with that today. And along with it, I'm going to try to screen share. Let me see, I'm flipping browsers here, so. Okay. I'm sorry, I'm figuring out what I'm doing here. Okay, screen share, application. Okay, here we go. There we go, it's coming up. There we go, got it. Okay, all right. Um, is that full? Uh, let's see. I'm going to go back and see if I can see it, what you see. All right. Oh, so you can see all the slides there on the side. Yeah, it's pretty. That's okay. Okay. Are, are you back, Ron? <laughs> you blipped out. Jody, for a okay. There you go. Yeah. Just, you're good right there. Just go. Go ahead with it. Okay. Um, so, before I start into um, the Venus Project, I just wanted to do a very brief review of um, what Swiss Indo is. This is just a, a little general overview for anyone who has not heard our prior webinars. Um, the full name of the organization is Swiss Indo World Trust International Orbit. It is a nonprofit, humanitarian, and sovereign organization with its own combined collateral of 78 billion, billion kilograms of gold and platinum. U.S. Swissindo was founded by the Founding Fathers in 1887 and holder of certificates for 25 parent countries, parent banks, and parent armies, lands, 
licensor of patent license, license agreement of world currency printing, also sole custodian of 884 World Bank infinite collateral accounts. Wow. Guantanamo is headed by a single authority, Royal K681 HMMRA1, Sino ASS2 IR Sugi Hartono Tonogoro, HWSTM1, holder of microfilm, controller of the currency with a mandate to free humanity from all debt bondage in the modern day slavery system through payments order 1 to 11, and to refinance the world economy with a total amount of one quintillion US dollars. And that's what one quintillion looks like. <laughs> this mission was started by the late founder of the United Nations, first president of Indonesia, President Sukarno, and the president of the United States of America, John F. Kennedy, with the Green Hilton Memorial Agreement. The purpose was to end the financial slavery system, eradicate poverty, end the global financial crisis, and to bring heaven on earth. Now UN Swissindo is here to complete the mission. All above mentioned facts are legal, signed and sealed by the Makama Agung, which is the Indonesian Supreme Court. On June 2nd, it was signed by M1 and by the Supreme Court on June 23rd, 2016. Um, so that's just a, a brief overview about Susindo and its mission. And now I'd like to move into um, the Venus Project. The Venus Project is um, one of the, the, the grandest um, projects that Swissindo is funding, has already chosen to fund. And um, by looking at the scope and intent of the Venus Project, um, that will also reflect on Swissindo because you'll see why funding a project um, couldn't be done if the motivations and the goals weren't aligned with each other. But to begin, the reason we're highlighting the Venus Project Day is as a way to give tribute to Jacques Fresco. Um, he, along with his business partner, co-founder Roxanne Meadows, built this incredible vision of future cities called the Venus Project. And this here is Jacques Fresco. And, and Jacques but, Fresco, uh, tell us a little bit a lot of people may not know who he is. Right. Well, I, I have, um, he's, as I said, he's the founder of the Venus Project. And I'll, I'll go into that a little bit. Um, okay. he, he died a little over a week ago on May 18th at the age of 101. Wow. That's a good long life. Right. That's really impressive. And so I wanted to speak a little bit about Jacques Fresco, um, I don't think people who follow Swissindo would, would necessarily be looking into Jacques Fresco unless they were interested in the Venus Project, which is um, a very big part of um, kind of changing, helping to change society. He, this, this man was a visionary and his, his ideas are really fascinating. So um, I wanted to speak a little bit about him so everyone could appreciate this man and his work. And um, we all, of course, wish that Jack would be around to see his work come to life when construction begins. But um, we also know in our hearts that he will be truly overseeing all of it from his new perspective. Did you say when construction would begin? Do they know? That would begin when, you know, when, when everything flows through. I can't, I can't really speak to that. We don't have timelines for. That's for, okay. That's okay. But, so um, here's some information on Jacques. Jacques is described as an American futurist, a social engineer, an inventor. He was self-taught. He worked in a variety of positions related to industrial design. He wrote and lectured on sustainable cities, energy efficiency, natural resource management, cybernetic technology, and automation. And most notably, he advocated for the global impl implementation of a socioeconomic system which he called a resource-based economy. Can you see the new slide? Yes. Okay. So to Jacques, a resource-based economy <clears throat> begins with the premise that all goods and services are available to everyone, not through any kind of payment, credit, or labor, but all goods and services are fully and completely available to everyone, period. So coming from our current reality, it's hard for us to even conceive of how this would be possible, how this type of scenario might happen. So the majority of us buy into the idea that this is how the world works. We have to pay for everything. We have to earn our keep. Nothing is free. And yet Jacques Fresco over 40 years ago 
was already envisioning this, this new possibility. So he offers his vision of a complete rethink of not just a city, but cities as a whole that can function on land and sea sustainably, completely changing how we measure the economy, how work gets done, how transportation functions using non-polluting energy. So he was a visionary that did not need to conform to what he saw around him. And this vision extends to his concept of governance also, which he described like this. The aims of the Venus Project have no parallel in history, not with communism, socialism, fascism, or any other political ideology. And why is this? The Venus Project reassigns all of this work to computers and machines, which he referred to as cybernation. It's the automatic control of a process or operation by means of computers, like, like we see now in manufacturing, but this can be extended into many other areas. So this was the core of his concept because it would free everyone else from having to do all these tedious, repetitive, labor-intensive jobs that are typically low-paying. And it could instead be done through computers and what he called mega machines. And that's, I'll go to that on this next page. These are examples of his mega machines. So you can see in the upper left corner, um, his idea was um, to, um, you like, wow. what you wow. see in the upper left, that would theoretically would be um, that those could be apartments and they could be mass produced by this mega machine. And then you can see it's sort of like a little pod and you have these huge machines that can lift the pods into place. And then ultimately you have that looks like a pretty cool view from those apartments in the upper right. But sure they, does. because we luckily we already sort of have this um, this this idea of how this might be done because now we're all becoming familiar with 3D printing. We know that they're already 3D printing some buildings. So that potential of being able to um, create something really for almost any type of topography, any location. Um, some if 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 you read some of his information on the Venus project, you know he was talking about using all incredibly new materials where you could um, basically create something that's very light and yet flexible and these and and strong at the same time. So these could withstand the elements really well. There's new designs that are more um, that are safer and stronger, like in let's say in hurricane winds or for earthquakes. Um, and in the case of something happening, like we have, you know, there are certainly crises that happen today. Um, these, these pods can be reproduced very easily. So you could, you know, think of, of the many ways that that could be applied in various different circumstances, either to provide housing quickly or, or just to be able to rebuild something, you know, that right. um, nothing happened. So, for him, with this system, um, the system of financial influence and control will no longer exist. The low paying jobs can be handled by robotics. So now there are some people that get concerned about something like that. They say, well, you know, what are people going to do for jobs? Um, but anybody concerned about this, the jobs going to automation, I would like to go back to the statement about the resource based economy. All goods and services are available to everyone for free. Now this. This can't be implemented tomorrow, of course, but um, Jacques suggested that, um, you know, creating these machines and getting things rolling, he thought it was about a 10 year timeline to get to the point where you could have one of these cities prepared and going. And then it's a, a matter of just moving in that direction towards the research based on. Jody, Jody uh -huh. when does when that is 10 year timeline, timeline start? start. Is, it, is it from the start of this? project which has no no start date currently <laughs> right right yeah okay. these are sort of just general um you know the 10 year timeline was was Jacques, um what he speculated it would be you know it's i suppose it's entirely possible it could go faster um i don't know how much i did hear him say that that that's actually what he he mentions in some of his videos um right. but I suppose with the way technology has moved along, maybe it's possible it could be faster. You know, I don't, I, I couldn't really say, but yeah. Well, I so far I completely support and have, have believed in for quite some time now what he's saying. And I personally, I feel that I know intuitively, I know that 
that these pictures you're showing and the ideas of the Venus Project, they will come to fruition. It's a matter of, you know, when, but um, I see that happening. It's very clear. It's it's a no brainer. Right, right. I think it's it's really fascinating. It's it's sometimes hard to make the leap to go from what we already understand as our daily lives, but there's there's so much that could change that would just free people up to pursue other things. And I think people just have to be be able to kind of get out of their own mental box and allow themselves to think, wow, if I didn't have to work just to live, what would I do with, you know, what, what would I pursue? What is my dream? What, you know, um, I don't even right. think we can, you know, trying to think through all the possibilities, you can only get so far. I'm sure there's a lot that would present itself once we're in the situation where we'd be like, wow, this is even better than we thought. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, so anyway, this, uh, this is just to highlight the, the last little over 40 years of work of Jacques Fresco. And um, I'm <clears throat> glad I was able to, you know, um, we're, we're of course sad that he has moved on. <laughs> Um, but we know he'll be overseeing this. But um, it also offered this opportunity to talk about the Venus Project a little bit more because it's um, such a, a, a fantastic vision for everyone. And I think what's really important here, too, is because the Venus Project is truly transformative for the Earth and everyone else. And Swiss Indo is also transformative. And so I think everyone can sense the incredible harmony that between UN Swiss Indo and the Venus Project coming together, um, they, they complement each other because one one they kind of needed each other. You know what I'm saying? So it's um, it's it's yes. kind of really really cool because obviously Jacques didn't know about Swiss Indo back when he started all this, and Swiss Indo probably didn't know about Jacques. So <laughs> it's just yeah. really it, it's neat that these these dreams were were you know. Um, being created in their own little places in the world, and then when they come together, these are huge, huge. So for anyone who's followed the Venus Project, um, or even those who just learned about it and who can see the potential of this vision, we want everyone to know that Jacques' legacy of the Venus Project will be actualized by the Royal K681, that's M1, and the mission as agreed. His memory his outstanding achievement will be eternally present in all future cities in 253 countries and 34 provinces in Indonesia. So most honorable Jacques Fresco, we acknowledge and salute you. Um, I do have a, a little intro video, which I think I mentioned to you. Right. Okay. Uh, yeah, go ahead. If you're ready to share that, um, feel free. Do I have to stop sharing to get out of this page or can is it possible to just go to a different? I think it's going to scrape, share your screen no matter what you're showing on your screen. So um, as long as on your computer you go, there you go. Okay, so you see that switch? Yep. Okay. We should see anything you do on your computer. That okay. You're <laughs> okay. <laughs> I know when I escape out of this, it's a little bit slow, so there'll be a little drag at the end. Okay. Okay. I think you're going to have to exit full screen. Well, if when you start the video, I'll let you know because I'm seeing something weird. It's it's kind of, but go ahead and start the video, and I'll let you know if you might need to uh, put your screen back the way it was. The um, full okay. screen looks kind of strange. So should I just put it back now? No, go ahead and start it. I have a feeling it's just showing us the whole white part of the the screen. For some reason, we just see all white, and it says click click to exit full screen. So go ahead and start, and I'll let you know. Okay. All right, let me know. The Venus Project. The Venus Project. No, go, go ahead and uh, go back to non-full screen. Please. Okay, so it's not working? Okay. No. All right, maybe that went too big. Yeah, I'm not sure what that, there you go. Okay, go ahead and start it. You're seeing it now? Yes. Okay. All right, I'll go back to the beginning. What is the Venus Project? And can you turn your sound up just a little bit more? It offers a new socioeconomic system yeah. that isn't capitalism, communism, socialism. Maybe uh, 
a little it's more. Anything that has ever been tried before. There you go. A dictatorship. Or is it democratic? Yet it will achieve what all democracies have always tried to and never did. Freedom from violence, abuse, coercion, and restrictions that are unnecessary and only serve a small minority at the expense of the rest. It is a system that works for all of us and the environment we depend on. It seems that society today is unable to provide many people with a high standard of living, although it has been technically possible to do so for quite a while. There are many technical solutions that have been around for many years for housing, transportation, creating clean, renewable energy, growing nutritious food, and providing clean water. But very little has been done to put them into practice due to the insufficiencies of the social structure we live in today. The Venus Project offers a system that would invite those technologies in, shorten the workday, and raise the standard of living higher than what most people realize possible. We invite you to learn about the Venus Project at thevenusproject.com. Okay. All right, let me know when you're back to... Okay, I'm here. Okay, and do you, do you see, are we back to the slideshow? Yep, I see it. Okay. I can't wait to uh, have one of those homes. <laughs> oh, I know. Cool. I think they look like they have pretty cool views or just being able to be in any location. That seems really neat. And I, you know I was, what? They, they should all be spaceships so we can detach <laughs> from that big post when we want to just fly away and, and move to the next, you know, the next area or region. What if they were just magnetically attached and they weren't even like, it's just a, I think they have pods like that sometimes on some of these spaceship movies, you know, you have a pod and it just yeah. sort of electromagnetically connects. <laughs> Great idea. Yeah, that would be a little scary as we know it, but I, I'm sure someday that's very possible that you could just pull up to it and, and attach your pod there and, and uh, you, you know, you can, you're, you're good to go safe. Right. I, I think I could probably fill a whole slide with some of the, architecture and transportation and um, some of the, you know, the, the various different, even the machines that if you Google around for Venus Project stuff, there it's just a, a, such a wide variety and unending, you know, list of designs. It's, they're so cool. And, um, and if you really start reading about it, um, I don't, I don't know where Jacques got this, this concept, but he was, he wanted it to get to the point where basically people's intentions for what they wanted in housing was all they would need to sort of project into a, I don't know if it was like a, a, a manufacturing space, but you could, in theory, sort of think of what you want and it would be created. So I guess it's, it's leaping past needing to design. You're just like I want a three bedroom house with whatever, <laughs> something like that. It's it's, yeah. a, it's a cool concept, I guess, in the future that might entirely be possible. Just thinking about it, maybe somehow the, the thoughts can be channeled into the design and then it actually creates it for you. I, I don't know. It's really, really cool to read about though. Okay. So, so what's, um, do we have more? Oh, there we go. Yeah, no, so now I wanted to, um, we're, we're going to go back to the DBLC and the M1 voucher this week. These are the um, the two documents that we've been focusing. Well, we the M1 voucher we introduced two weeks ago. Um, we said that had just been launched in Indonesia. And the reason I, I made this slide showing both the DBLC and the M1 voucher is because there are some people that are getting back to us that I think are, are there's some confusion. Just that they, they look at these photos that are going up on Facebook or going on social media, and yeah. they just see a certificate and they aren't able to, um, you know, determine what the difference is between the two. So I thought I could just put them side by side because they have very different functions. It is important to understand what each one is for. But there were some people thinking that the M1 voucher had already been released in other countries, and I want to restate again: the M1 voucher currently is in Indonesia only. So um, the, the document that is active in all countries is the DVLC. That one is actionable. That was um, 
that was brought up February 4th, 2016. And so, Jody, did the DBLC also happen that way where it was released first in Indonesia and then it spread to other countries? Is it the same process? Actually, no. The DBLC was released and um, that that was worldwide right away. But okay. I think there, there wasn't really the, you know, it wasn't, um, we weren't pushing it out there on social media, putting it out there for, for people at the time. Um, because we knew that the banks, the you know, it's 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 sort of been a process of education um, between Swissindo and the banks and and any organizations that that might be receiving this. Um, there's there's been that education process. So it started slowly, and then just um, as we were able to connect with um, some different people within banking, or or like I was mentioning, where um, I think in the first the first webinar we were talking about um, something that we're calling notifying the banks, where we aren't asking for payment, we aren't asking for settlement of any debts, but we're providing the DBLC to the banks or to different organizations, along with some of the other evidence of the fact that this is legal and some of the, uh, like, the like the Supreme Court decree, which has found Swiss Indo and the DBLC valid and legal. So, um, the DBLC is, is, um, it's, it's sort of been a, a process, I think, with that one. Um, whereas the M1 voucher, we're already, the DBLC kind of, I guess you could think of it as, um, started the ball rolling with the awareness. And so now the M1 voucher, there's so much awareness in Indonesia. Um, but because it's, um, it's a different type of certificate. It's doing something completely different. So I think they're, you know, they're starting in Indonesia. Indonesia is what we call the lighthouse to the world. They will be the way showers. They will be leading us um, forward in this in it, in this whole process. Everything that Swissindo is rolling out with payments one to eleven. Indonesia is the the one to begin the process, and then we can follow their lead. So actually, with the DVD, Indonesia has led there too. It wasn't rolled out there first necessarily. It was rolled out to the world, but Indonesia really, really took the DBLC and ran with it. And they, you know, they <laughs> they actually kind of overwhelmed the banks, and and so the banks had to respond. And that's why for the rest of the world, um, that's why we keep talking about the DBLC because we really need to notify the banks more. We really need to make an effort to get the word out there so people um, become more comfortable with this. Now, and tell us, tell tell our um, our viewers there how we can notify the banks because they might be wondering. Maybe they didn't see the other um, YouTube videos. Oh right, oh. And, and actually, that's one of the things I wanted to do this time. There is a PowerPoint that goes through some of the DBLC points, and um, I was going to do that, but I was just. First, I was just wanting to address the difference between the DBLC and the M1 voucher. So, um, okay, that's that's great. Since you got them up there, go ahead. Let's discuss the the difference of those because that's pretty important. Okay, so visually, what I want when people are looking at photos online on social media and they see people holding up different certificates, the really obvious thing to look for is you can see the M1 voucher on the right. There's a little rectangle for a photo, and so. I will be showing you photos of the M1 voucher um, um, preparations that are going on in Indonesia. And you'll see everybody's applying this, their little passport photo to it, and then they're putting their seal over that. And their seal is actually a thumbprint that they put over the photo and onto the paper. So it makes it much more difficult for somebody to swap out the photo. But um, that's just that's the, the visual, the obvious visual cue. Um, but Additionally, I want people to understand that the DBLC is for debt relief and the M1 voucher is uh, a form of abundance. So that's actually monthly basic income. And we want people to understand that the DBLC, which is good for debt up to approximately $150,000, we want to make sure that people realize any debt that they have that's from prior to February 4th, 2016, they should 
use the DVLC for that rather than when the M1 voucher becomes um, is issued for the rest of the world and the monthly basic income come, comes into play, it would be um, unfortunate if people use their monthly basic income to pay off debt that actually could be covered by the DVLC. So that's why I wanted to just highlight this right now so that people understand there are these two pieces and the one is for debt relief and they should think of these things um, separately. So long as their debt is from February before February 4th, 2016. So those are the, those are the main um, the main points that I wanted to bring up. But so the M1 voucher is the the newest um, newest release from Swissindo that was released. I believe it's on May 13th, and um, that is good for monthly basic income of 1,200 US dollars. Um, that's been issued in Indonesia in Indonesia only at the at this time, um, but it is forecast to go worldwide. We don't have dates for that. But I wanted to um, show some photos now because it's so exciting in Indonesia. People are just going wild. Um, I'll switch to the next. Here are people with their um, M1 vouchers. And you can see as you look through some of these photos, you'll see some people have little photos on them. Some people just got theirs and they don't have the photos on yet. But right. there has been such a mobilization in Indonesia. It's been fantastic to see these photos being shared because there are just, there are people lining the streets. There are various different locations in different cities where they're printing out all of the M1 vouchers to make sure that everyone gets one. Um, there's the additional piece where ultimately when they go to register for their monthly income, they also need to have an ID. And in Indonesia, they need something, I believe it's called like an EKT. It's like an electronic ID. And um, a lot of people in Indonesia didn't have this ID or they didn't have access to, maybe they didn't have a passport photo or they didn't have a access to color printing. So everybody's really mobilized and started working together to make sure that everybody's covered. They're getting people the IDs, they're getting people their passport photos. They're offering stations where, okay, we've printed all these out. We just need the people to line up. We're gonna make sure that you get your M1 voucher. So this is a like a preparation phase. And I think it was really smart to do it this way because there would have been some people sort of, um, you know, they might have been missed or um, taken a lot longer. This this way, you can you can activate the entire country at the same time, rather than sort of coming out piecemeal. You know what I mean? This was I think this was a really good way to do it. So um, I love this lady in the upper left where she's like jumping the lady in the blue blue uh, whatever shirt. Um, Here's just another example. When I was saying there were there were places that were printing them all out and helping prepare them for people, you can see um, all of these on the floor, or at least the majority of them. They have photos on them already, so they're preparing all of these. These are just more people that lined up, came in to get their M1 vouchers, and then here's one more. I wish I could go there. It would be so much. So much fun to see the activity as it's going on, and we there there are more photos, but I thought this was a good sampling. The people look so excited. So I wish uh, I, I wish Susan had made it on. I think she probably um, she's really good at remembering stories, and I'm sure she'd have some to share here. But now I think um, I'm going to move on to. The, the DBLC, we, we've talked about the DBLC the last two times and what we've missed, um, we missed being able to go through a PowerPoint to explain the process because if you are wanting to notify banks or if you're wanting to um, put together packets of information to just even to share with your neighbors or to share with the family, just to inform people, um, there are some documents that we recommend, oops, that we recommend putting together to to help, um, you know, they're, they're validating documents and they support um, information with the DBLC. So uh, we've talked about that, but we've never managed to go through the PowerPoint. So that's what I would like to do right now. So let's see. Hi, Jody, sorry about that.
It's, here we go. Okay, can you can you see that, Ron? Oh. Let's see. Am I the only person here? Uh, anyone see me? <laughs> Let's see, or can anyone hear me? Okay. I don't see Ron here now, and so um, I'm still there. Okay. Thank you, John. <laughs> I think I'm doing this on. This is so strange. My own, I don't even think Ron's here now. <laughs> okay. Well, we're, we're um, not now, but you're not talking either. Okay, I, I need to send a quick note to, well, to Ron, I guess, since I'm the only one. Oh, he's coming back in. All right, so I'm going to continue with this, with this slideshow since this is one of the things I've been wanting to cover all along. Um, let's see, let's go back to the beginning here. Hopefully everyone can see this. Okay, thank you for everyone that's responding. This is sort of funny since I'm the only one here. I'm not sure. <laughs> not sure if it's working. Oh, I've been. And asked to leave and come back. Okay. I think because Ron fell off, I need to come back. So sorry, everyone. I, I, I need to go so that Ron can come in, I guess. Hi, everyone. We're back. Sorry about that. That was actually my fault. Something on my computer 
Um, and there is Jody. So we are back. Okay, Jody, go ahead. Uh, start right where you left off. Sorry about that. Okay, I need to do a screen share again. Then. Yep. Go ahead. Just let me make sure I'm on the got the right page here. Okay, so we're going to be continuing with the um, with the PowerPoint DBLC guidance. The DBLC for anyone who's just tuning in is the Debt Burden Liberation Certificate, which is um, a document released by Swissindo last year, February 4th, 2016. That's good for up to $150,000 approximately. It's it's actually listed in rupiah, 2 billion rupiah, Indonesian rupiah, but uh, $150,000 um, in debt for each adult. Okay, so a screen share. Let me know when that's. Um, Jody, some of our attendees are writing things here. Uh, I'm seeing a screen that says sit tight. The presenter has started the broadcast, hasn't started it. Hold on a minute. I don't know why we're in here and they're not. <laughs> okay. Dan was kicked out but got back in. Yeah, let's just give it a minute. Um, I think that it, it was something I did on my end that um, I didn't know I did. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I didn't I, know I, you were gone. <laughs> I don't know what happened. That was weird. So, are you seeing are you seeing the DBLC PowerPoint now? Yeah, I see everything. The connection between you and I is uh, fine. Okay, let's see. I uh, there's a reconnect at the bottom. Oh, Dan says there's a reconnect at the bottom. So I guess if everybody sees the bottom somewhere, they can they can just hit reconnect and they'll be right back in. I'm sorry, everyone. We had uh, an issue with my my computer um, froze up on the administration window. So I'm the administrator. If my window freezes up, it messes the whole uh, webinar up and um, it's, it's my bad. I was trying to do too many things on the computer, so I messed that one up. Sorry. Go ahead, Jody. We can start. Okay. You have people back in. Um, okay. Yeah. So here's the screen. This is the um, – I wanted to go through the PowerPoint for the DVLC um, because there are some steps, and, and people have been asking us about the steps. But in particular, I'd like – to show people that there is there is a link that we will um, I'm going to provide some links to Ron to put under the video when he uploads it to YouTube so that you should be able to find all these different things from the Swiss Indo website to finding the debt burden liberation certificate and actually all the other documentation that is supporting that if you wanted to do some notification or a notifying yeah. bank or other organizations or even talking to other people and by the way, I wonder if there's going to be two videos. So you guys look out for this problem we had. It might, oh, it I might be recording two videos today. So, uh, but anyway, I just want to throw that in there. So I'll put it in the bottom of both videos if okay. if that's the case. I've never had this happen before. So, all right. Go ahead, Johnny. All right. Um, and in particular, this this page that I'm on right now to show you this this PowerPoint. This is on the SwissIndo.News website. So if you go to this link, which we will provide, I'm also scrolling down and hopefully you can see there are all these links down below. These are called DBLC socialization documents. So you can get the DBLC in English. There is the Indonesian version, the legitimacy and standing of the DBLC, the grand acclamation, which was an event back in October, 2016, the 12 portal document, which holds has um, all the signatures 
and and gives M1 the um, the it, it identifies him as the asset holder, and then the infinite accounts audit. So all of these all of these links are right here. These are all the things that you would need. It's all in one place at this one link on this the website. So um, starting starting with the PowerPoint. Is this big enough, Ron? Should I make it? I should make it full size. Um, it, if you, yeah, if you can make it a little bigger, it looks good the way it is. But if oh. it's no trouble to make bigger, I was thinking I could go full screen there. It's full, and you said full screen didn't really work for you before, so I'm not sure. Yeah, the, for some reason it's blurring everything out. So oh. yeah, you oh. have to. That's fine, right there. Okay. All right. Um. So there are two types of DBLC um, available. One is in Indonesian um, there, and one in English. Um, there is actually a corporate DBLC. I'm not really going to go into that, but there is a corporate one. And if you read through Payments 1 to 11, um, if you go through the, the Swiss Indo website, there is a, a DBLC for debt relief for corporations. So people who are interested in that, they should they can look into that as well. Okay. Let's see. There we go. Okay, and these are just some points that I already mentioned that the Debt Burden Liberation Certificate was issued February 4th, 2016. So any of the debt that you were wanting to, um, to cover has to have originated prior to February 4th, 2016. Um, the DBLC is intended to release all debts, individual, corporate, and country governments. You know, it may, I don't know if I have to retract that. I thought there was a separate DBLC for corporations, but maybe it's the same one. We, I, don't know. I don't have India today. <laughs> um, That's okay. We can. Uh, they they can all probably find that information out on the website Swissendo News. Uh, Swissendo dot news. Right. Um, the DBLC is a legal and valid instrument, as I was mentioning earlier there was um, a Supreme Court decree coming from the Indonesian Supreme Court that ruled the DBLC and Swiss Indo as valid. So it rules the DBLC as a, as a valid banking instrument. And this is part of UN Swiss Indo's payment order 1 to 11 to free all people around the world from all debt slavery. The DBLC is a ticket to our global freedom, not just personal. Through public awareness, we are awakening all parties. Okay. Um, the DBLC is good for up to 2 billion ru Indonesian rupiah, which is approximately 150,000. The reason it's written like that is because it was originally stated in Indonesian rupiah, and there's the exchange rate that kind of um, can bounce up and down a little bit. So if you say 150,000 US dollars, that's just an approximation to whatever the 2 billion Indonesian rupee are at the time. And then the corporate debt liberation is for up to 2 billion US dollars. So notice the one above says 2 billion rupee and the one below is US 2 billion. Keep going, Jody, I'll be right back. Okay. Um, this is a little history to give people some confidence about what the DBLC is, is for. All debt globally has been fully paid through Debt Burden Liberation Certificate Program issued on February 4th, 2016 by Royal K681, King of Kings, top president and chairman of Swiss Indo World Trust International Orbit. This is M1. He is referred to by many names and has a, a long title, but um, I'll simplify it to M1 for here. The debt burden liberation was public. Uh, debt burden liberation certificate was publicly announced at the Grand Acclamation on October 16th. All governments and banks must now accept all agreements, legal facts, and UN Swiss Indo programs, including the DBLC notification on how to settle debts in order to bring back prosperity to the people. Um, one of the questions people often ask related to the DBLC is they ask if this is debt forgiveness. Um, that's not exactly the right term. It's it's um, obviously every every everyone's ledgers need to work. This isn't about make, making the bank um, cover debts and now they have trouble making their books work. It, it, it's not really about that. The payments will ultimately come from the infinite accounts. 
um, which are all um, connected back to Swissindo. So those who are using a DBLC to release debt from themselves, that DBLC becomes what the bank can use to turn around and work with Swissindo in order to recover that money. So it's not about the bank forgiving any debt. And I know there's some confusion around that, and that's why I wanted to um, be able to cover this slide or this this PowerPoint. What is I'm the back with you? Oh, okay. Um, I think I'm just going to go over this. I was just mentioning how how it's important that people understand um, that the the DBLC is not debt forgiveness. It's about satisfying our debts, but then the DBLC actually becomes the tool that the bank can use to go to Swissindo to get payment. There's like there's there's um, it's it's consolidating debt within each bank, and then they have banks above them and above them and above them. So there's a process for the banks. But people don't really need to understand all those pieces, but I want there are a lot of people that are concerned. They're like, why? Why is this debt just being forgiven? And it's not it's not really that everybody's books need to work. But um, the, the debt is being released for the people. So long as it's before February 4th, 2016. And then that DBLC actually works for the bank in order to cover that. So the debts will actually be paid by Swissindo. And I just I've really been wanting to make that clear. I'm not sure if it was able to be covered very much in the previous webinars. Okay. Um, so here, here's where we get into the, some of the banking information. So once somebody submitted the DBLC to the bank, next, the central bank, the prime banks, and the heads of other banks, after they receive the DBLC and agree with the instructions, they will apply it to all bank, <coughs> excuse me, creditors throughout the country. So at this stage, it's their responsibility to make contact with Swissindo um, to have the following steps take place. So that's what I was trying to explain is you, your, your, the part you play as a single person with debt at a bank, you're providing the DBLC, but that becomes the tool that the bank can then use to work with Swissindo in order to recover that. So it's not about anybody having to just cross out debt. It's actually being repaid by Swissindo. Um, let's see. This, this gets a little complicated if people, this is on the website. So people, if they, if they want to continue reading about that part in terms of technical matters, you know, there might be some banking people out there who are, who are new. They just found out about this and they probably understand the inner workings of banks more than I would. So um, this, this gives you some sense of um, where the funds are coming from. We've got the safekeeping receipts and accounts with six prime banks, the 884 ASBLP infinite collateral accounts, those are actually paying for the debt ultimately. Okay. And it's important to understand that M1 has already declared responsibility for the funding. The DBLC document is an official document based on clear and valid laws from M1. And as I said, we already have the, um, the Indonesian Supreme Court decree, which declares both Swiss Indo and DBLC valid. The explanation of the debt liberation was made in a document titled Imam Madi and linked to the six accounts and six prime banks and safekeeping receipts of Bank of Indonesia, plus the creation of the safekeeping receipts of funds. Um, so this, yeah, this, this probably is less what people need to know, but I want for those who are out there who maybe have connections with some bankers, um, some people who, who might know a little bit more about how, how this process needs to happen, we do really want the banks to understand this. The more banks can be exposed to the information and understand it, um, the sooner this can move forward. Oh, and one of the points that I forgot to bring up when we were looking at the DBLC um, side by side with the M1 voucher, um, it's our understanding that the M1 voucher will um, help, what is the wording, help to, um, it will it will help the, the the processing of the DBLC. I'm not using the right word. Um, I'm going to go. I don't know if our people are here today, <laughs> but um, it will it will help that. But we still need people to notify the banks and other organizations, and and even just friends and neighbors, whomever you're comfortable talking to about Swissindo, 
just helping them understand what's going on. Every little bit helps. It, it you know, if, if you aren't comfortable notifying banks, by the way, you don't have to notify your bank if you don't want to. You could notify other banks. Um, I've sent I've sent this information to a number of different banks that I don't even have accounts at. It's just the process of notifying because when they can see the documents, once yeah. you've seen something, then then it, it begins that process of um, looking into it and understanding it. And if you have provided all the other um, you know, supporting documentation, then they can begin to understand it. And the reason I wanted to get to this PowerPoint is because it has this additional, these additional points that relate specifically to the banks, which I, I'm not a banking person, so I really can't speak to this, but um, more than likely there are some people out there who either know banking or are connected to banking people. This is the, the PowerPoint that you can go through with them to help them understand it.